Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial uh, for Cinema 4D. Uh, in this video, I will show you some uh, basic ways of setting up your keyframes and uh, show you also a couple different ways of uh, setting up your keyframes and a few different options you have. If you're coming from After Effects, uh, the first way I'm going to show you is the manual way. And uh, basically, if you click on any object inside Cinema 4D, for example, if I create a sphere, let me just position it here. If I click on my sphere, as you can see, I have these little grayed out uh, circles and all objects have the same thing. In this case, in my camera, I was doing some animation, so let me just create another, another camera. As you can see, everything's grayed out as well. All the different options we have in terms of animating, we can animate the exposure, we can animate you know, the shutter speed for the camera and so on. All the options inside Cinema 4D can be animated. Even the materials, if you look inside, we have uh, these little grayed out circles next to the color, the fuse. We have it in all, all the options throughout Cinema 4D. Anyway, so uh, the first way is the manual way in terms of setting up your keyframe. And it works the same way as After Effects, if you're familiar with that. So if I click on my sphere, for example, I have my radius, or let's just do the location. Um, so if I record my uh, location on frame zero, as you can see, it turned red. All I have to do now is scroll through the timeline, for example, fl uh, frame 40, move my sphere, and as you can see, uh, the Z location uh, changed. Now I moved it on the X, the X location changed, and now I moved it on the Y, and the Y location changed. So all you have to do now is click once, and you can record each one. So now it turns red again, so it goes red, yellow, red, and now you know it's recorded. So if you go back, you have your basic animation, and this is your uh, you know manual way of setting up your keyframes, uh, really easy and uh, really effective, you have a lot of control. The second way of setting up your keyframe is um, using this button right here. It's going to be grayed out because I don't have any objects selected, uh, but it's called Record Active Objects, and what it does is it records location, rotation, and scale at the same time. So for example, if I do, if I create my sphere again, and I click this button, as you can see all the options for scale, rotation, and location uh, turn red. So now if I scroll through the timeline, same thing, um, frame 40, and now I move things around, maybe rotate it. You're not gonna see any rotation because you know it's a sphere, it's round. And if I look, as you can see, the location turn yellow and ro my rotation turn yellow. So all I have to do now is press this button again, record act uh, active objects. And now everything got recorded. So if I go back and play my play my timeline, as you can see, I got my simple animation. And uh, this is useful as well because you know so most of the time you're going to be uh, animating these basic um, properties uh, on all the objects. You know the camera, how the camera moves, and so on. Uh, so the record active uh, object is really useful. And uh, the third way of creating your keyframes is auto keying. This is uh, really cool as well, so let me show you how that works. It's a little bit tricky. So if I create a sphere here, and I also let me jump inside my camera, and I'm going to frame my sphere like this. So this is on frame zero. And now I'm going to press the auto keying. So what it's going to do now is going to record all the moves that I do with my sphere and my camera and any other objects from this point on. So now if I scroll through the timeline to, for example, from frame 60 and move my camera to somewhere over here, for example, and now I'm going to move my sphere, maybe something like this, and then let me just position the camera as well, maybe something like this. So now what it did, it recorded all the moves that I just did. So all you have to do now is unclick auto keying and go back to the timeline. And as you can see, you have your smooth animation. It's a little bit tricky because you have to click it on and click it off. If you don't, you're going to have a really messed up scene because all the moves that you did with camera and so on is going to be animated. So let me just show you another example. If I delete the sphere 
and the and the camera. So let's do maybe a cube here. Let me just duplicate this cube, maybe make it smaller, place it in here. And now let me create a camera, jump inside, frame my cubes, maybe something like this. And uh, from this point on, I'm on frame zero. And I'm going to click auto keying. So now whatever you do is going to be recorded. So now you scroll through the timeline, for example, frame 60. I'm going to move my camera maybe somewhere over here. And I'm going to move both of my cubes down. Maybe this one will go up and I will frame my scene just like this. And now all you have to do is click off auto keying and now all the moves that you did got recorded. So if you go back and play it, you have your nice and smooth animation. So auto keying is really good. It just, you have to be careful, uh, make sure it's on and off at the right times and make sure you're recording all the moves, uh, you know, really smoothly because is really it can really mess up uh, all the keyframes that you did previously. Um, now I'm going to show you how to manage those keyframes that you recorded. Uh, so so there's two different ways. One is the dope sheet, and the other one is the F curve. So if you click on Windows, you have uh, dope sheet, and dope sheet will manage all the keyframes that you recorded. So for example, for the camera, I have my position and rotation, and if I jump inside, these are the keyframes. So for example, if I want to uh, make uh, you know the animation shorter, I click on my position keyframe. Instead of being 60, I can make it, for example, 40. And uh, for rotation, I want to make it longer. Oops. Let me just click on this one and move it to maybe 72. And for the cubes, for example, I want to make it 48 and this one 64. So this is where you manage all your keyframes. And also if you highlight all the keyframes like this and you hold Option or I think it's Command on the, on the Mac, you can uh, duplicate the keyframes. So you can um, you know, really, um, really set up your animation the way you want it to. Anyway, if I play it again, as you can see, all the things are changed uh, based on the, all the keyframes that I moved around. And uh, the shortcut for the um, for the dope sheet is the Shift F3. I'm on a laptop, so I have to hold uh, the Fn button. So you have to hold Fn, Shift, and then F3, and it will bring up your uh, timeline uh, dope sheet. And uh, over here you have your F curve, so you can switch in between, just like this. And uh, if you want to know the shortcut for the F curve, it's in here as well. If you click on Windows and uh, find uh, F curve, it's a shift alt F3. So if you hold shift alt F3, it brings up your F curves. And uh, it works the same way. So for example, if I click on my cube, I have my X, Y, and Z, and you have all the curves, and you can click on the, on the points, you know, move them around, make them sharp. It's basically all the transitions are, are if you, if you come from After Effects, this would be you know, really easy for you. It just uh, finding it inside this program is the is the trick is the trick part. And uh, also uh, another shortcut that you should know when it comes to working inside Dope Sheet or the F curve is the H key. So if you click H, it's going to frame whatever you're looking at. So for example, if I you know scroll to the timeline and click H, it's going to frame all the keyframes that I have activated in the scene. And that way I can work uh, better and it's uh, easier for me to see. Um, another quick tip is uh, make sure you set up your FPS frames per second. So as you can see, my frame rate right now is 24 frames and uh, it's going to render all the frames. Um, but usually it's set to current frame. So make sure you change it to all frames and when you do an animation. That way it's going to you know f uh, render out all the frames instead of just one. Uh, another option you have to watch out for, if you go to mode and you go to project, make sure this FPS, which is 24, matches your render settings. 24, as you can see, 24 here and 24 here. Because, for example, if you have 30 frames per second in this section, like render settings, 
and uh, your global project settings are set to 24, uh, your frame rate will not match and you have you know messed up jaggedy um, animation so watch out for that. Another thing is um, as you can see I have these black borders around my scene and it really helps when I jump inside the camera you know where uh, how it's going to be recorded you know exactly uh, with the borders end and begin and uh, the way you change the opacity of the borders if, if you click on mode and uh, you go to view settings and then you go to view tab you have the tinted border option and uh, in here you can change the opacity of the border as you can see here also a few different options when it comes to keyframes if I go back to my dope sheet it's uh, shift F3 on Windows and if you're on a laptop it's uh, you have to click the FN uh, button and then shift it in F3 to bring it up as you can see when I'm inside the timeline and I start playing around with different keyframes. We have the uh, value key options here uh, pop up. So we can do interpolation, we can do spline, linear, um, you know, the key time, uh, you know, lock keyframe, and uh, all kinds of different options here as well. So you can really, you know, precisely change all kinds of different options when it comes to animation. And also, you have a bunch of options in here as well. You know how you want transition, ease in, ease out. Uh, you know breaking, um, breaking overshoots, and so on. I'm not going to get into all the complicated options. You can explore and play around with these. Uh, but hopefully, this video um, show you a few different options when it comes to creating keyframes. Uh, anyway, thank you for watching, guys, and I will see you in my next video, guys. Uh, have a good day.